DC said, he, I'll Hello. have to pay him a lot more money if he doesn't get lots of applause. So, I can distribute the same money to you. So, can you give him a big round of applause? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Bigger round. After lunch, you know, it, it might be even better to kind of stretch up. I know it's a, it's a after lunch session. Uh, DC, first of all, good to see you. You worked in multiple sectors. You started in FMCG. You went to retail. Uh, you then uh, are back in a sector which is the uh, one of those sectors that is growing. It's literally sunrise and, you know, uh, there is a new sunrise every day. This week there was a new EV policy. I was referring to it in yep. the morning. And whenever we talk of brands, we talk of sustainability, we talk of contributing to the earth. Uh, you now work with New Go, which is building a new ecosystem uh, for buses, for Absolutely. mobility. Uh, tell us, tell the audience a bit about what is New Go and what you're trying to do at New Go. Thanks, Anurag. Thanks for having me here. And uh, so New Go is... Uh, it's a mass mobility, what we call e-mass, which is electric mobility as a service. And India is at a cusp, Anurag, now, like you've seen the way the roads have become or the expressways have come. What happened to the US in 1920s and 30s? What happened in the rest of the world in 50s and 60s? And what COVID has also done is people want to travel and people want to see India now, like as much as they were like wanting to go abroad. And India, you'll be surprised, has 800,000 private buses. When you, if you want to go from like Bombay to Pune or Delhi to Jaipur, Delhi to Chandigarh or wherever, Chennai, Hyderabad. But you have airlines and you have Vande Bharat kind of trains, but you don't have an experience on the road in buses the way Indians deserve now. So what Nugo is doing is, first of all, it's completely electric bus. So there's no emission, it's good for the planet. And we are building a world-class customer experience starting with lounges. The lounges are as good as the lounge way we walk, you, like you something said. like this, where people don't have to stand on the road if it's, it's rainy season, if it's sunny, you don't, maybe there's no bus shelter, sometimes there is. Everything is digital and it fits your theme so well on customer. And I'll surprise you that there's not even a penny of cash exchanged. 82% of booking is online, 18% is through agents, which is also online. So it's completely tech. The bus is a piece of technology. There are 26 features. Our coach captain who's, who drives the bus, actually in full public view for safety, takes a breath analyzer test. Nobody does that, huh? right? And if the laws are that you can't go beyond 80 or 100 kilometers per hour on that expressway or that road, we won't go that. It's like locked. Right? There's a governor. There's a governor. Yeah, absolutely. So you can't even go. There are six cameras. And from the moment you book online, you can track the bus. If you're sitting here right now and the bus is supposed to come, let's say, half a kilometer from where we are near the airport, you can see on GPS tracking where the bus is moving and at what second it'll reach there. So you can time your own travel to the point at that moment. And when you're in the bus, you can share your trip and somebody can see where you're going. So that's so much so on safety. What we are also doing is, in intercity in the world, there is nobody in EVs who's doing range like which we're doing. There is something called range anxiety in EVs. Like some, they, at least till two, three years back, people used to worry, oh my, what if the range runs out or the charge runs out? Let me surprise you. We run more than 1,000 buses a day, which is new go plus the ones we run for the state. And roughly, we are moving roughly around 1.3 to 1.4 lakh people every day put together. Wow. And on the new go side, uh, not that we found any, because it's a very unorganized industry and there's no brand in India which does it on the bus side. There is no company in the world which does intercity. So world over, if you see, like in London or New York or in Delhi, Bombay, the buses like BST in Bombay or DTC in Delhi, they do within the city. We're the only one who does from city to city, and our average bus does 600 kilometers a day on electric charge. And women's safety is such a big deal for us. I'll come to the women. Yeah. yeah. So that's what New Go is. It's a platform, right? So like it's it's a completely it's a completely technology-driven uh, customer experience. You know, you call it as the electricity mobility as a service. Yeah. So e-mass like yeah. mobility as a service and electric mobility as a service. Absolutely. Now, you know, 
life is about aspirations. You know, people buy a certain car, they want to upgrade, they buy a certain house, they want to upgrade. They have a certain phone brand, they want to upgrade. In India, somehow bus travel is not seen as, you know, up there, so to say. It's not seen as, you know, aspirational, if I may use the word. Uh, with Newgo, you're trying to change that, right, from the lounges to the quality of buses, to, uh, to the overall experience. Do you think uh, the movement from airlines to trains has happened? The next movement is from even affluent customers feeling comfortable traveling in buses. Anurag, you are so right. And can I surprise you that 70%, between 7 to 75% of India every day in India moves in buses. And it's not a very pleasant experience. And what we've done in planes and train is yet to be replicated at least of that class of customer experience. Worldwide, if you see, there is Flixbus in Europe, right? There are brands. Uh, there's a big brand in the US also. In India, it's like currently very fragmented. And if I ask you that name three brands of airline, you can. If I ask you name three brands of train, even in train, you will say Shatabdi, Vande Bharat, Rajdhani, some, some, and these are good trains, right? These, but if I ask you name a national good coach bus service which can take you from Bombay to Goa or wherever, from Chennai to Hyderabad. We'd like to take a flight. You, we you, at least I never think of taking a bus. Yeah, can you guys name any good bus brand which you go from one city to another? So Red Bus is a platform. Red Bus is not a bus. Red Bus is like an Amazon. It's a, it's a market aggregator. Newgo is one of the biggest players on Red Bus, on Paytm. So Red Bus is an app. They don't run buses. Any other take? City flow is, yeah, it's within city. It's not intercity, it's within city. And within city, there are, most cities have EVs, but like from Chennai to Hyderabad or Bangalore to Hyderabad or any city to any, like we run from Delhi to Shimla also in the hills. Nobody does that. So there is no brand, not in India, not in the world, actually nowhere. And that's what we're trying to do. And to Anurag answer you, somebody has to start and this needs creating an ecosystem and a lot of capex. Because this is not like a diesel bus that you stop anywhere and you put diesel and you can park the bus on the road, no. You have to charge it, so you need to plan a midpoint where when people get down for lunch or dinner, when you travel for so many hundred kilometers, you tie up that lunch or dinner, you know, bio break, you put up a charging infra there. Then at the end, there's a charging infra. So that needs a lot of investments but then it's a seamless journey. So you can't just, it's not just like you buy an EV car off the, off the shelf of a showroom and then start driving. No, you gotta build an ecosystem of chargers, depots, training, maintenance, coach captains. So I think that's what we are trying to do. Uh, DC, again, uh, there's a new class of travelers. These are solo women travelers. And women, from my understanding, are very apprehensive traveling in a bus for various, various historical reasons. Now, when we are looking at the kind of customers Newgo has, almost 30% of your customers are women. Uh, what have you done to be able to attract almost 30% as your customers? So if you, absolutely Anurag, and this is what we want to change because we are an ESG company and we are electric and we want to create change. If you go on our Instagram handle, any one of you can go on Newgo right now, you will see most of the posts, most of them are about women. In fact, we just partnered with Delhi Capital, which went into the final this Sunday itself, uh, and Newgo partnered with them, which is a women's cricket team, right? WPL. Uh, tomorrow, we are releasing something big with two of the women celebrities on safety in our buses. If you go and make a booking, if any women goes to on the, and by the way, the booking is like an airline. You go on the app, the chart will come, you can cheat seat 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. If a woman books a seat, the next seat cannot be booked by a male. We'd rather let it go empty or only another woman can book it. Then there's a separate helpline only for women. You can see it on our app or when you book, you'll get a number. And here's what we do from a call center. We know the PNR. And you can study a PNR that suppose you've booked and you have a family, you have four people traveling on the same PNR, right? Or different PNR, but the same payment. You, your wife, and two kids, let's say. 
But if I have a PNI with only one woman, then I know mostly she's traveling alone. alone. So that data comes out in the system through analytics. And we call them because we know everything is digital. The bus is about to start. So within the first 20 minutes of the bus journey starting, our team will call them on the phone and say, hey, Miss So-and-so, we are here to help you. And the bus has so many features. There's a breath analyzer test. There's an artificial intelligence camera in front of the coach captain. Even if he yawns, it's in real time the picture goes to our command center so and to the host. From safety standpoint. Safety. So suppose you're driving in the night and you're feeling sleepy. And that camera will capture and immediately you'll get a, the host will get a call and you have to stop the bus as per SOP, wash your face, take a five minute break, otherwise you can't drive the bus. And all these features we'll explain to the women. I don't think to the best of my knowledge, people can Google, we've tried, nobody has 30% women occupancy on buses, intercity, which a lot of buses travel all night. We started a year back at 17%. Today we are at 31. Uh, I have told my team like, I'd love it if they can do it 40. There would be like a dream in the world that women feel safe to travel in our buses across the country. And that'll be a dream for us. Thank you, DC. Again, I have to tell you a personal story. How many of you shifted to Mumbai from Delhi, who live in now in Mumbai, but originally from Delhi? One person, two. I have to tell you, I started with Nawal. I started exchanging from Egypt 23 plus years back and I, you know, I was single, Nawal was single, so we took a house in Juhu and we had to travel for work. And I was 28, Nawal was 26, and uh, I was 28 and a half, and Nawal was 26 and a half. Uh, he was 25 and a half, sorry. And, you know, we used to travel, we used to, somebody told us there is an AC bus from Juhu to. Uh, Marine, marine lines, you know, sometimes we'd go and, and I traveled by the bus. It was okay. It was much better than the, the AC coaches in the, met, you know, there was no metro, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I cannot live in De the Bombay novel. You live in Bombay. I'm very happy living in Delhi. So imagine if we had convenient travel. Second is when I was younger, I traveled only on two routes by bus. One is actually three. One is Volvo buses that go to Jaipur in the night. The other is Volvo buses to Shimla and that side. And once to Chandigarh, long time back, more like 30 years. But you know, it is not even in my consideration set. If I have to go to Chandigarh, I think of Shatabdi. I don't think of a bus. So how do you change this consumer behavior? One is you upgrading the buses, sustainability consciousness, electric buses, better quality of drivers, safety, uh, electronic navigation, lounges which are good. So, do you think the numbers that travel by bus, say if they are X, when they, how are they likely to move up in the next 12, 24, 36 months? So fantastic. First of all, my story is like you. I came at rather than 28 or like novel 25 and a half, 25 and a half from Delhi to Bombay, but I stayed for many years. Uh, after China, India has the highest number of buses in the world on the road. And despite a massive railroad network, every day in India, more than 70% people even today travel by bus. So you don't have to convert people. It is an SST, right? Like I'll give you an example. You want to go from Delhi to Chandigarh. Even I used to travel in my first job, Asian planes from Delhi to Chandigarh. The Shatabdi only goes at 7.30 in the morning. If you want to go from Bhopal to Indore, there's a train at one time. Now from Bhopal to Indore, I have 40 buses leaving every half an hour. Every half an hour. So you don't have to go at 7.30. You don't have to take a flight. Bhopal to Indore, Indore to Bhopal. So and how much tra travel time? Can I surprise you? If you Google right now, uh, hopefully I should be right. I have not checked it in a couple of days. But for Vande Bharat, just Google Indore, Bhopal or Bhopal and the ticket should be between 800 to 1000 rupees. Our bus is like world class and the ticket will be 400. 400. And Again, flexibility. from the bottom of the pyramid and you know Indians are value conscious. Let's be very, so if there is safety, if there is customer experience. And the biggest thing is you choose your time. In train, every half an hour train is not leaving from Delhi to Chandigarh. Ashadabdi is not going to go. But for me, every half an hour there's a bus from Delhi to Chandigarh and half an hour 
20 times I'm going from Delhi to Chandigarh and 20 times from Chandigarh to Delhi. So you, and here's the, here's the data I'll tell you. In trains, bookings typically stop 12 days before the train goes, 80%, 90%. People don't travel one day before train booking. So it's a very planned travel. Airline happens till three days back, two days back. The last two days, the tickets goes up like three times. It's very few bookings. Buses is the most convenient. 80% of bus bookings in India happens in the last 24 hours and 36 hours. So they are very different customer journeys. So there's no overlap. The customer journey is very different for an airline to a train to a bus. And if you need flexibility, suppose you've gone to Pune and you don't know what time you're going to leave, but you know between that one hour, right? You don't, then you don't want to take a flight or a train. You know there's a bus coming every half an hour. So and you have Pune, Bombay? We haven't started Pune, Bombay, but we're in most very part of the world. Bus. No, but in, we are in many, in the country, we are like in Hyderabad, Chennai, Bangalore, MP, uh, Surat, Indore, Bhopal, Delhi, Haridwar, Rishikesh, Lucknow, most, but not in Bombay, Pune, but we will come. We, we have our services in Maharashtra. From Pune, we go many cities. To? From Pune to Solapur, Ahmednagar, but Bombay we haven't yet started, we will in time. So, and you have uh, Pune to Shirdi? Uh, Pune to Shirdi we have to start. So, I, to these are, you should be very popular, right? I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, now, again, you know, customer experience is something which most intercity travel companies don't talk about. I mean, uh, and you're talking because about Because there are no service. brands. Who will talk about? There are no brands. So that's why, see, 800,000 buses. Can I surprise you the total addressable market if somebody is like, uh, when you do a startup pitch or a deck, you always write TAM. Today, as per McKinsey, it's 55 to $60 billion is India's bus travel every year and there's no brand. And by 2030, it will be a hundred billion US dollar market. And this is McKinsey's number. Imagine the potential. Imagine if 800,000 buses, and on top of this 160,000 buses, which the government runs on state transport, within city and across, add together a million buses. And the government is very clear they want to electrify it. They've started with the fame scheme and now they also want to make intercity electric. So I think next 10 years, this is going to like change the way Indians travel. And Indians want to travel better. We know it now. You know, as we started, our theme is leveraging technology to drive customer centricity. As I said, you worked across FMCG, retail, and now in the EV space with green cell mobility. Why do you think it's important for brands across sectors? I mean, I was at a real estate conference of ours in Calcutta. And developers were talking about, you know, being customer centric. Because in the past, whatever you built, it sold, you know. Scarcity, uh, you built at a certain price point, and it sold. But today, amongst good developers, so they're talking about what does the consumer want. So why do you think, um, from your own journey, it's important for all brands to be very customer centric? See, the biggest thing brands are built, and that cuts across all the industries which we spoke about, is trust, the number one thing. Today, the biggest problem in the bus industry is that if you go and if till the bus is 60-70% full, the bus will keep waiting and the, the guy will keep saying, Aja, Aja, bus may, you know, because they won't start, because then the bus won't make, that route won't make money. For us, 96 buses leave on time, 96%. We still fail on 4%. For whatever reasons, we do. 96% time means if it's 3.05, the bus will leave at 3.05. And I'm saying it in public, people can try it. That's the biggest problem. Now, when you said real estate, why do people, when DLF launches in Gurgaon or Godrej Properties or Macrotech or Prestige in Bangalore launches or Shoba, they're sold out? Because with other builders, people aren't sure that if they do pre-booking, whether the building will complete well, or not. After Rera, but that's trust. Change. But Rera, with uh, a lot of things have got sorted. Change, yes. But these were issues, but in the right? Past, these were real issues. These were real issues, but that's where brand comes in. So what you build in a brand is trust, convenience, and a promise that what you, what you say you will deliver. I think that is why you need brands. And it is no different like a soap or a shampoo or a house or a real estate or a bus or a plane. Uh, the best airline in India is built on being on time. Recently, three, four months back, there was a problem, but they've promised to fix it. 
but over the last 10 15 years they have delivered absolutely. on time absolutely it's a fantastic time. airline absolutely. indigo it's a fantastic and anybody airline. can run into a rough weather for a couple yeah, of they're months mostly, they're yeah, very but hats good. off to them absolutely i only fly indigo yeah so i think building a brand is building trust with consumers especially overnight travel women traveling alone sometimes you know at which restaurant we'll stop you know one of the biggest challenges on rock we are trying to solve you laugh is it's not my problem I washed it it's washroom on the midpoint so we urge the restaurants where we stop our buses where people eat ke bhai washroom please saaf and now you laugh we have an app we like tracks washrooms yeah, yeah, you take pictures when people are not mm. and make sure that they're clean because the only problem people say women is the washrooms aren't clean no it's not sure. my restaurant it's, well, it's a very place, important thing but i'm choosing to, to stop it i must take ownership so that's what we are driving hopefully i'm not saying 100% we'll be able to address it but i think to it with 80% people are getting more and more aware that's how the journey changes so dc again uh, in the morning mr thagarajan of blue star was there he said as the marketers go up the ladder they're mostly based in delhi bangalore bombay they don't travel to where the customers are especially they are in tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 tier 5 cities how many times have you traveled by new go n number of times my last journey was bhopal indore so i am not going to in even name because i'm between delhi and bombay mostly in bangalore i took a trip uh and this is recent ones you really don't get the pulse of the consumer till you sit with them and travel can i also surprise you today women as a host in india is not even a concept today in asia book of records and india book of records we have coach captains women who drive these buses these 18 ton 12 and a half meter long bus with 45 people in it within cities and we have 60 women as host in the bus so much so is the change we are bringing and you don't come to know the problems till you're in the bus there are small small nuances like every glass has that hammer that you know if something goes wrong you break it but where you place it also people will give you feedback that they can't reach so where do you place it only when you talk to people and don't you tell who you are you learn the feedback uh in the last 7 16 years i haven't owned a car i only travel uber yeah i only travel uber my driver so i talk to all of them and learn a lot i tr- i talk to them and whatever happening in the city or whatever the troubles or what is happening i mean you learn a lot from them so i think that's how you learn fantastic i know again you mentioned about your partnership with the certain team in women's cricket uh, and you, chennai and fc also the football also team football. and so with you the sports uh, to effectively build a mobility brand electron you know electric mobility as a service brand why sports and what are your learnings and dividends from it so this is a uh, i don't think this was very planned but it happened with one team which approached us saying that can you give us your ev bus uh, one of the t- big teams said that when our players are going from the hotel to practice every day for the match and when they go for the rail game they want to be sustainable and use the bus and they branded the whole bus with the new go and their own logo and then we realized this is a very big one so now we've tied up with most of them even haryana hurricanes kabaddi team i'm from haryana that's play- why you yeah so you know that so even they are we are partnered with them so they travel in the buses across when they're going for games and matches and if they're living in delhi and they're going to haryana somewhere in a match then they use the bus and the buses go branded so it's in, in itself mobility right you're moving so it makes a lot of sense dc uh, you've been in leadership positions for many years what i asked this to mr thagarajan and masking this to you what is your advice to cmo there there are lots of cmos who spoken in the morning some are speaking post you and in the evening we have cm cm awards what is your advice to cmos who aspire to become ceos so i don't think i'm going to say something which is new i'm sure you know it i think the the challenge is in executing it i think be authentic i think it's really it's a very simple word but it's very difficult to do i think you have to be truly authentic today whether it's your team or whether it's your consumer they can see it through earlier when we started as young or even before our time marketing was also seen as ke like impress karna hai or like you know 
sometimes to stretch the limit which is not even real like today there's ASCII and there's a lot of things you read about that brands make claim which can be questioned that truly do you even deliver that you drink this and your height will go two inches taller you can't do that anymore so be authentic I think CMOs have a great chance to become CEOs because the real business comes if you understand the consumer and the consumers paying for everybody's salary when they pay from their wallet and nobody better can understand the business than a CMO but you need to be authentic and you need to also where I see a lot of CMOs not putting effort is to understand a P&L like their best friend is not a CFO <laughs> they're mostly on cross on like you know paying their vendors on time or you know contracts or negotiating I think understanding PNL is very important because that's where you connect when you spend money on marketing or whether it's a customer acquisition cost or your campaign how does it impact the revenue because earlier when digital marketing was not there and performance marketing was not there there was a joke that marketing money is work which half we don't know but today we know today we know most and most companies are moving towards digital so I think work with the CFOs and if somebody has understanding of finance and understand understanding of the consumer I see no reason why why all CMOs can't become CEOs Anurag that's what I'll say uh, my last question and I'll bring the audience though we have uh, very little time what are the two three trends that you see in business in future which impact the job of marketers or everybody at a CXO level. Uh, for example, sustainability is a big movement. For at least two decades, we've been talking about brands having a purpose beyond profits, top line, bottom line. What are the uh, generative AI is changing the way we look at data, the way we are able to look at trends, the way our, we are able to do certain tasks. You know, we can have a separate session on agency of the future because a lot of tools can generate creative but so what yeah. is happening in business beyond sustainability beyond generative AI so I think I think it truly is taking shape that business role is to make money but no more at any cost uh, and the younger generation like my children and I used to test them and I, I don't want to get into an example but I remember challenging my daughter once because she was doing something on sustainability and I told, and I thought, do, do, chaar, din ka hai, bhoot utar jayega, you know, when she was working on something very hard, I said, Achha, really? She was a teenager. And then for a month, she kept working, and I thought, seriously? And then for six months, she worked on it. And then I sat down with her and saw, heard what her friends are doing. This generation is different, Anurag. We've grown up differently. We are inducting ourselves into sustainable because it's the in thing. The generation which is coming now, they truly believe in it. So the whole world will have, because there's no choice otherwise. It's not global warming, it's a global warning actually. You see the way climate thing is. And somewhere we have to start, right? The other is, I see a lot of senior people not investing enough time in data analytics and understanding what is AI. Everybody will know what is, a, what is generative AI. But can I ask how many of you have an account on generative AI? or chat GPT how many, how many of you have actually how, how used use chat GPT tools? a lot of them not bad not bad that's like 60 percent and I asked this question in the morning DC at 60 percent is very no good. no not this because one. these are CMOs this you go to other you. functions how many less. paid users for chat GPT pro in the world guess no I don't know take a guess you'll be wrong but take a guess uh, must be in millions how many 10 million 188 million. I want Google. Google paid. It. Wow. That's insane. paid for Chat GPT Pro. I'm wow. not talking free. Wow. Wow. And Google it. Uh, it's from wow. a third party source. It could be more. It may have moved. Uh, that's humongous. So humongous. They're doing billions of dollars of revenue in a month. So if people people are paying for it, and what's happening to Nvidia? The world is moving so yeah, quickly. So, you know, analysts are saying at current prices, also the Nvidia chip, you know, stock is undervalued. Yeah, and Nvidia. I mean, like. It's undervalued, so where is it going to go? <laughs> Nvidia's market cap is nearly as big or little near our country's GDP, around three, three and a half trillion. And that's what's the change. The change is happening so fast, Anurag. 
So it's not about whether being AI or digital or analyst or tech or sustainable or ESG or EVs or whatever or, you know, hydrogen. It is the speed of change. Can you catch up? I think as leaders, that is the challenge we all will face. How can we unlearn? How can we let other people do? And this unlearning is very difficult. And you huh? know, uh, Devendra, there is an oxymoronish behavior here. Now, when we talk of, let's say, blockchain, we talk of humongous amounts of, you know, mining. And then mining has issues for environment. We're talking of AI, Gen AI. The amount of computing power you have to invest is size of football fields. Now that, the amount of consumption of energy, again, is very oxo. It's a trade-off. Anurag, and I totally get it. You have to start somewhere. Even in EVs, today the power you draw, 80% is conventional, 20% is renewable. But it's from outside the city and within city you're not doing pollution. We've tied up and invested in a one megawatt plant where we'll be using solar and wind to even charge our buses. But Rome was not built in a day. See, at a snapshot if you take, we say like this that, Are, but you're using this, but overnight you can't build end to end yeah, everything. Yeah, it takes trying billions to grow and my billions. Hair overnight. Yeah. They haven't grown. Take so you started at one point and the whole renewable sector is also growing. I totally agree. Wind, solar. And you can't switch off one day. It's also growing. So they will connect someday and it'll all, but it's going to take time. Thank you, DC, for being honest and candid and authentic.